You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa received the Council of Representatives Speaker Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal, the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry Samir Abdullah Nas, at His Royal Highness's Majlis in Glebia Palace. His Royal Highness issued directives reactivating the Joint Committee between the Council of Representatives, the Shura Council, and the Government in order to promote greater cohesion that will help secure further tangible results. He noted that the collective efforts of Team Bahrain are pivotal to achieving his man seeking Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's development aspirations. He added that Bahrain will continue to implement initiatives that deliver on the aspirations of Bahraini citizens and create opportunities which will contribute to the kingdom's sustainable development. His Rohan has noted that the contribution made by young people towards enhancing Bahrain's vital economic sector is pro prominent in promoting the kingdom's economic development. The Council of Representatives Speaker, the Shura Council Chairman and the Chairman of the BCCI expressed their gratitude to his Royal Highness the Crown Prince for supporting enhanced cooperation between the executive and legislative branches. The meeting was also attended by Deputy Prime Minister Jawad bin Salim Al-Rayyad, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa and a number of senior officials. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting and Secretary General Yasser al-Nasr made the following statement. The cabinet expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the people of Bahrain on the advent of the New Year holiday. It wished the kingdom and its people many happy returns as well as further progress and prosperity. It hailed the accomplishments achieved in 2019 in all fields. The cabinet welcomed the selection of Manam as the capital for Arab tourism in 2020, which reflects the rich history and heritage of the kingdom. The cabinet then praised the Saudi security efforts in foiling a terrorist scheme in Dammam, affirming the kingdom's firm stance towards Saudi Arabia regarding any measures it takes to maintain its security and stability. The cabinet welcomed the signing of the agreement on the headquarters of the unified military leadership of the GCC in Riyadh, as it reflects the keenness of member states to increase cooperation and coordination regarding security and defense. The cabinet condemned the terrorist attack in Somalia that resulted in the killing and wounding of several people and affirmed Bahrain's firm stance towards Somalia. His Royal Highness then directed to establish mechanisms to facilitate procedures for direct government support to citizens to facilitate citizens benefiting from cash support programs.
In implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa of reviewing the mechanisms of levying fees and the necessity for fulfilling citizens' needs, and upon the recommendation of the Coordination Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, the Cabinet decided to waive the fees of an additional 200 government services in 11 government institutions. The Cabinet also decided to approve a resolution amending the fees of services at the Nationality Passports and Residence Affairs. The Cabinet approved amending housing units' conditions of disposal after paying the value of of its financing, it also decided to refer a draft law amending Article 3 of Decree by Law 10 of 1976 on housing to the Legislative Authority. The Cabinet approved a resolution restructuring the Accountability Committee of the National Health Regulatory Authority. Bahrain's joining the Arab Customs Cooperation Agreement has been discussed and referred to the Ministry Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs. The Cabinet approved the government's coverage of the cost of electricity and water bills for shared facilities and housing apartment projects for 2019. The Cabinet took note of the programs, plans and projects that achieve the goals of the Government Action Plan 2019-2022 that are implemented by the health field. The Cabinet reviewed three reports, two of which were submitted by the Minister of Education on the outcomes of the 17th Conference for Ministers Responsible for Higher Education and Scientific Research in the Arab World, and on the fifth meeting of the Board of Directors of the Regional Center for Quality and Excellence in Education, as well as a report submitted by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism on the meetings of the 25th session of the Executive Office of Arab Ministerial Council for Tourism and the 22nd session of Arab Tourism. The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministry Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, toured the main streets and junctions of the Kingdom along with the Minister of Works and Urban Planning, Islam Khalaf, and other officials. The Deputy Premier directed the Ministry to intensify its efforts to beautify the Kingdom's main streets with trees and greenery by consulting the relevant experts and developing its human resources in the field. He affirmed that green spaces are important for the environment, that they can contribute to traffic management, and that can contribute to leaving a positive impression on visitors to the Kingdom. The tour also included the Mahara Grand Park, which was built upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, which is set to enter its second phase of development next year, as well as Sheikh Salman Highway and the Janabiya Junction to discuss the development of their surrounding spaces.
The Speaker of the Representative Council, Fawzia bint Abdullah Zain, hailed the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to bolster cooperation and coordination between the legislative and executive authorities to serve the country and its people and increase achievements in all fields and implementation of the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. She expressed appreciation and gratitude for meeting His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to discuss the means of achieving national aspirations through further coordination and cooperation. She added that the Council of Representatives affirms its support to His Royal Highness's directives of free activating the Joint Committee between the Executive and Legislative Authorities to continue making national achievements. The Chairman of the Shirk Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that the cooperation between the Legislative and Executive Authorities will continue. As Saleh added that this cooperation effort represents one of the pillars of the legislative achievements that are contributing to the development of the Kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the ongoing support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. As Saleh praised the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa during his meeting with His Royal Highness along with the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and industry. He said that he expressed appreciation for such efforts, especially improving the government's performance and in encouraging innovation based on objective standards. Asad also praised the efforts of the Coordination Committee led by His Royal Highness, which follows up on the economy's performance and its financial stability. The Korean Embassy held its 6th annual Korea Movie Week Film Festival, bringing four of the best and most exciting movies produced by South Korea and covering different periods and styles. The free admission screening was a big hit among Bahraini and international viewers as Movies by Korea, a country that celebrates a century of cinematic production alongside TV series, are increasingly popular outside the Korean Peninsula. The 2019 Korea Movie Week was open for the public every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the Seif Mall Seneca Complex. The embassy first organized the, the Korean Movie Weeks in year 2014, and this year's Korean Movie Weeks is its sixth edition. The main purpose of having you know, the, the Korean Movie Weeks in the kingdom is to in, introduce Korean culture to the Bahraini people. I believe the movie is a very efficient and familiar medium that people can learn the other you know, countries, you know, other people's you know, culture, just watching you know, the movies. I believe the culture is very important in the sense that it you know, connect people and it make people come very closer to each other. So having and organizing cultural sharing in Bahrain, I think it's meaningful not only for Koreans, but also for Bahraini to learn you know, foreign cultures. We are physically distant, far away. Bahrain in the Middle East, Korea in the Far East, but through watching Korean movies and Korean dramas and you know, Korean traditional or contemporary music performance and learning Koreans, I think we come very close, closer than we ever imagined you know, in this world of you know, connectivity. The 2019 Korea Movie Weeks, I believe, is the sixth edition of the Korean Movie Weeks, and it's always great to see the turnout every year. Every year we see more people, we see new faces, and it's always people who are newly interested in Korean culture. And especially this year, we, have a gr we had a great lineup of movies. So hopefully in the coming years, we can also get some good movies to show to the public. I remember the first time that they had this festival, they used to hold it at the Little Theater and Bahari National Museum. So it was a very small hall, but every year we've been expanding. We've gotten a bigger theater this time. It holds over 200 people. So it's always great to see the number of people interested in Korean culture increasing every year. And it's even special because we have a Korean language learning center here in Bahrain and the numbers are always growing there as well. Um, as we know, you know, with the arts and entertainment especially, I think definitely with movies, it's a great gateway to the culture. So I think it's a great way for people to learn more about Korea. And you know, in a sense, it does help with bilateral relations. You know, people, once they get to know about Korea, people might end up going to study there, might learn, might learn the language. And in the end, it's good for Bahrain and Korea as well to help deepen relationships between the two countries. We've been, in, this is the second time where we showed up to the movies and uh, it's always a good time. Sometimes it's always uh, emotional, sometimes you see people going out with tears in their eyes and uh, it's always a good time if you see people that share the same passion and, and 
a lot of people from all around the world that show up for the same event. That is a great way to approach soft diplomacy to the people, to touch the people with uh, the culture, to get an inside view of how how people like to watch Korean movies and how they're different from other movies and series. Um, it's actually a very, very fantastic initiative. It's been happening for a few years and we try our level best to come every time. Um, it's great to watch um, movies on a big screen like this. So it's especially uh, Korean movies. Yeah, especially Korean especially movies. Train to Busan. <laughs> <laughs> so because the their storyline, the acting and the, the the direction, all of it is fantastic. So watching it on a big screen is like a really, really nice experience. Two civilians, one of them a child, were killed by a mine planted by the Iran-backed Houthis in al Bayda province. The 14-year-old and another man died in the blast as they shepherded sheep. Two other civilians were also injured in the explosion. Houthi terrorist militants also attacked a military parade in al Dale province yesterday, killing at least six troops and four children. A ballistic missile hit a soccer field as resistance forces took part in a parade for new recruits. The U.S. military carried out airstrikes in Iraq and Syria against the Kataib Hezbollah militia group in response to the killing of a U.S. civilian contractor in a rocket attack on an Iraqi military base. The Iraqi security and militia sources said at least 25 militia fighters were killed and at least 55 wounded following three U.S. airstrikes in Iraq yesterday. Sources said at least four local Kataib Hezbollah commanders were among the dead, adding that one of the strikes had targeted the militia group's headquarters near the western Qaim district on the border with Syria. Operations resumed at Iraq's southern Nasiriya oil field today, but sources said it will take up to two days for output to be fully restored. Protesters broke into the oil field, which produces 80,000 barrels of oil per day on Saturday, and forced employees to cut off electricity from its control station, taking it offline. The incident marked the first time protesters have shut an entire oil field. The oil ministry said it did not affect Iraq's exports, adding it would use additional output for southern oil fields in Basra to make up for the missing shipments. The Israeli security cabinet has voted to withhold 43 million U.S. dollars of tax funds from Palestinians claiming the money has been used to promote violence. The sum represents funds that Israel claims the Palestinians have used to pay the families of people who have been jailed or killed as a result of attacking Israel. The Palestinians say the payments are needed to help vulnerable families who have been affected by violence and Israeli occupation. Israel last year passed a law deducting parts of these transfers that it said were supporting militants' families. Yesterday's decision was a continuation of that policy. The death toll from a massive car bomb in the Somali capital has risen to 81 as rescue workers pursued their search for the missing. The bombing on Saturday at a busy intersection in Mogadishu was the country's deadliest attack in two years. No one has claimed responsibility, though President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed blamed extremist group Al-Shabaab, which has regularly carried out car bombings and other attacks against the internationally backed government. A spokesman for Somalia's information ministry said the death toll could climb further as rescue operations entered a third day. In other developments, U.S. Africa Command said the U.S. military launched airstrikes against the Al-Shabaab militant group in Somalia, killing four terrorists. AFRICOM said in a statement that in coordination with the federal government of Somalia, U.S. Africa Command conducted three airstrikes in two locations targeting Al-Shabaab militants in the vicinity of Konyo Barrow and Kaliyo Barrow yesterday. It said the two airstrikes has killed two militants and destroyed two vehicles in Konyo Barrow, which, while a separate strike killed another two in Kaliyo. Lebanese protesters rallied inside a commercial bank in the capital Beirut today, forcing it to give depositors money from their accounts amid recent informal regulations limiting U.S. withdrawal of dollars. The protesters sat on the floor of an Audi bank branch, chanting against bank officials and banking policies. They eventually forced the teller to cash a 5,000 U.S. dollar check and give a depositor 1,000 U.S. dollars. Lebanon's currency has lost more than 30 percent of its value against the U.S. dollar after it was steady and constant for more than 25 years. Banks have recently imposed informal capital controls limiting withdrawals to up to 300 U.S. dollars a week and totally halting transfers abroad while protesters taking to the streets for nearly three months have turned their ire against the financial sector. 
The Taliban today denied agreeing to any ceasefire in Afghanistan after rumors swirled of a potential deal that would see a reduction in fighting after more than 18 years of war. At least 14 members of the Afghan security forces were killed today when the Taliban targeted a pro-government militia compound in northern Afghanistan before dawn. The statement from the insurgents comes as local and international forces brace for another bloody winter amid U.S.-Taliban talks to end the violence in Afghanistan. Deadly bouts of fighting have continued even as Washington negotiates with the militants in a bid to reduce America's military footprint in the the country in return for the insurgents ensuring an improved security situation. Egypt made a new entry in the Guinness World Records after the largest mosaic made of coffee cups was displayed at the Grand Egyptian Museum in Cairo. The world-famous boy pharaoh Tutankhamun is the face of the largest mosaic ever made of cups. Egypt created a Guinness World Record with a collage which depicts Tutankhamun's funerary mask, arguably among the best-known artifacts from ancient Egypt. It took 7,260 cups, according to the organizers of the event, to assemble the installation. The cups were mostly filled with coffee, with some containing milk. The collage, which measures at 60 square meters, breaks the record of a previous coffee cup mosaic done in Hawaii in 2012.